Uh, we know that's not true because some of the richest men in the world are constantly tripping on acid, as evidenced by Azalea Banks. Thank you for that information, girlfriend. That's the tea, sis. So I have never talked about my mescaline experience on this channel yet, mostly because it was probably my most mixed experience. Mixed feelings, mixed feelings. But today I'm gonna get into it a little bit as we talk about the How to Change Your Mind episode on mescaline. A quick note for anyone watching who's used to my hyper edited videos, this video is going to be chill, low key, hard cuts. I was not planning on making this series, but I am because y'all wanted to know my thoughts on the show. And yes, I am Chrysantilis. If you're new here, welcome. We are a realm dedicated to psychedelics and sacred plant medicine, all about demystifying and destigmatizing the trip. If you get a kick out of this video, please subscribe to this channel. We're working our way towards 10,000 subs. I usually say slowly but surely, but it's picking up. It has been picking up. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Patreon at Chrysantilis. And please comment your thoughts on this episode if you've seen it yet, the Mescaline episode. It was the last episode in the How to Change Your Mind series. I would love to know your thoughts. The following video is made for the purpose of education and harm reduction. We are not promoting the use, procurement, or possession of any plant medicine or substance. We encourage everyone to do further research and prioritize safety. So, I just have kind of like written notes in my computer that I am going to talk about. But like I mentioned at the top of this video, I do have experience, personal experience with peyote slash hikuri. I also do have indigenous ancestry, and for me, this was a way to personally connect with something that I have been so disconnected with in terms of medicine practices. It was a way for me to connect with what has been lost through time, genocide, colonization, all of that. And yeah, to just reconnect with my ancestry. So I say my experience with mescaline was mixed because the actual connection with the medicine itself, beautiful. I had a beautiful time with the medicine. I definitely connected to tree spirits. I definitely connected to nature in a completely new way. I, I had visuals that were unlike anything I've ever seen before. However, I was administered the peyote by Mayor Kames, who came up from Mexico, and it was a traditional healing ceremony that lasted overnight with folks who had been doing it their entire lives who are from that lineage. Now, I was not given an adequate heads up on how many people would be there. I was actually told that there would only be 20 people there, which is like really pushing it for peyote. And as people started to show up like later and later, it ended up being closer to like 60 people. So nobody had a really solid eye on them. I ended up having to go out out of the circle and administer like help and medical attention and breath work and like a lot of stuff to so many women who were purging in loops and nobody from the ceremony was outside of the circle or helping people having really intense experiences. That is like literally the tip of the iceberg in terms of my mescaline experience. But yeah, they kind of deceived me and other folks to join who thought that there would only be 20 people there. It was ridiculous. But that's just going into my experience with mescaline a bit. I would, I would like to have this experience again with an adequate amount of people. I know for mescaline, you're only supposed to have 15 to 20 people in a ceremony. In my ceremony, it was way too much energy. It was nauseating. The amount of people there, it was like being at a psychedelic water park and you're in the wave pool. And you know when you're in a water park and the wave pool is literally full and it's like, how is this even legal? You're like bumping up against everybody. You don't have any personal space. It was giving that. Even just speaking about it right now, I'm like feeling nauseous about the experience that I had. But my connection with the medicine was really beautiful. And it was really fascinating in this episode to hear that there are pushes for peyote not to be included in decriminalizing and legalizing initiatives. The peyote that I ate was from a bag 
that was USDA approved. It was an actual product like for the Native American church. And pivoting to Wachuma or San Pedro cactus, I'm out in Los Angeles right now. It really is wild to see all of the Wachuma growing out here. Like y'all. I had no idea that it was legal, but everywhere I go, it's like Wachuma City out here. So yeah, that is something that is really actually kind of funny to see in real life. I think it's amazing how they incorporate modern day issues and discoveries that are affecting the indigenous American community. So like, for example, their inclusion of the boarding school burial sites, that's a story that has just been getting more shocking and tragic as more and more has come out about it the past year. Like I'm on that side of TikTok and I've been following all of the unearthings that have been going on and it's just really absolutely traumatic. And I think to present the history of this medicine, that is a part of it. You know what I mean? The ancestral trauma completely relates to the fact that if we legalize and decriminalize peyote today, folks might just swoop it up and extinct its entire existence. That disregard for human life is so reflective of the disregard for the sacredness of this medicine. It was astounding to hear. People have just been like plummaging peyote spots. It shouldn't be shocking. It really shouldn't be shocking to hear that, but that inability to preserve plant medicine is directly connected to the colonizer mentality and the disregard for indigenous life, indigenous culture, all of the above. So I applaud the show for including the boarding school burial sites as a piece of all of this because it might not seem on the surface like it relates, it totally does. Side note, in my experience, peyote is definitely a ceremonial sacrament, so I appreciate that that's how they present it in this context. It, it was not giving concert trip. It was not giving Burning Man. It was giving stay in the circle, walk counterclockwise. Anybody seeking this medicine out or trying to get their hands on a bunch of it where they don't really know how to use it in a ceremonial setting, I don't think that the best time would be had. It's very powerful medicine. And I think ideally, if you sit with peyote, you want to be around people who have been working with it their entire lives and know what they are doing. I thought that the testimony by Julian was very powerful, especially this person having worked with this medicine at a younger age and kind of coming full circle and working with that medicine again, really powerful stuff. Side note, this series keeps mentioning Timothy Leary, but I don't think it ever mentions how he treated women and his family. I don't think you can separate the art from the artist so easily. And I'm all about talking about who these men actually were. So I listened to an entire Timothy Leary series by the podcast Stuff to Blow Your Mind. And if you really wanna know what kind of guy Timothy Leary was, I'd highly recommend giving that podcast a listen. I don't wanna get into too much of it here because I know that there are many Timothy Leary never did something wrong stands and y'all can have that. Y'all can have Timothy Leary never did anything wrong. I'm stressed, I'm stressed and I wanna keep moving forward. Yeah, I think it's important to treat medicine sacred and give reverence to medicines. I'm not of the mind that medicines should only be given to the top 1% and the rest of the effects of it will trickle down. Uh, we know that's not true because some of the richest men in the world are constantly tripping on acid as evidenced by Azalea Banks. Thank you for that information, girlfriend. That's the tea, sis. But yes, CEOs are out here journeying. They are out here tripping. I don't feel the effects of it trickling down to us quite yet. I'll let you know when I do. So I do get what Timothy Leary thought that he was doing. I do get what he was trying to do, but I think that an ego trip can be so destructive. And if you are not integrating psychedelics in a way that is challenging to your ego, you know what I mean? And I'm not saying he ruined things for the class. I'm not saying he ruined the pizza party for the class but he was definitely the beginning of, hey you guys, 
we might not have a pizza party on Friday and that sucks. Yeah, I feel like if the masses have access to alcohol and absolutely destructive, destructive substances that are legal, different psychoactive substances, I don't understand why plant medicine is illegal. And I think it's making less and less sense to folks. I think that there's some harm reductive way to roll out access to microdosing and psychedelics and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, if the masses want to journey, the masses should be able to journey. As long as we, the masses, have proper education, access to harm reduction, and access to community and integration and all that kind of stuff. Because like, if we're out here just taking five grams for our first trip, not getting set and setting right, all that kind of stuff, that will ruin psychedelics for you for the rest of your life. You will be like, hell no, I'm never going back there. So I think like, yes, psychedelics do need to be rolled out. I see the dream of the 60s, but like also we need to be mad responsible and have hella reverence for these medicines. It can't just be like cannabis because it's not cannabis, you know, but yes. I also think the Kikion, I wish I could try it. I wish I could try that Greek drink. I really do. Just them talking about it. That ancient, sacred, psychedelic, and also the vents. They didn't even talk about the vents, but the Greeks had some vents from the earth that they just, they'd sniff up the vents and they'd start having mystic visions. Do you know, come on. I'm trying to smell them vents. And I know I have some viewers in Greece, so if you know where the vents are, please, please send me a direct message on my website. I'm, I'm trying to get to the vents. But yeah, Kiki, the Kiki on. I would like to try it. I would like to try the Kiki on. I would like to try the vents. I would like to try so many of the Soma, the, the ancient types of psychedelics that we've lost track of today. Cause you can see ancient art. Right? We can all see art history, okay? Art history minor here. But uh, we know they was uh, journeying on something, okay? That's undeniable. What it was, what it was, I would like to know. I would really like to know. And with that, I will say thank you for joining me today and chatting it up a bit about mescaline. Please subscribe to this channel. We have this dope Keep It Trippy merch on Threadless, as well as a Patreon that I just soft launched. I am on Instagram and TikTok at Chris Santalis. You can find me there. And yeah, let me know what you thought about this episode. If you ever had a mescaline experience with peyote, hikuri, or San Pedro cactus, wachuma, you know, let me know. Let me know below. And don't forget to keep it trippy.